Last month, Beta Mariana de Jesus Mehameha arrived in the United States with her seven-year-old son seeking asylum in our country. After a several month long journey, fleeing horrific and inhumane conditions in her native Guatemala. A federal lawsuit filed on her behalf by the Nexus de Rachel Humanos law firm alleges that after two days in custody, U.S. officials separated her from her seven year old son and took her son while he was screaming and crying and did not give her a reason why they were separating her from her son. And despite the fact that she has been free now for over a week and hasn't seen her son in over a month, the U.S. government has not returned her son to her custody and will not tell her where her son is being detained. I caught up with Nexus de Rachel Humanos attorney Andrew Tate. Tate broke the lawsuit down to layman's terms for me in Washington, D.C., hours after the firm that he works for filed the suit. We filed a lawsuit this morning uh, against a number of agencies in the United States, uh, including Department of Homeland Security, uh, Health and Human Services, um, ICE, um, Customs and Border Patrol, and uh, essentially a woman was uh, crossing over, uh, Ms. Maya Maya. Uh, was crossing over the border with her young seven-year-old son. They were seeking asylum. They were apprehended by border officials and they were placed into a cell together. A couple hours later, um, they were separated on, w without any explanation whatsoever. Uh, just men in green uniforms came in and said, we have to take your child. Uh, we have to take your son. And she demanded to know why and they would not tell her why. And when a bunch of strange men come in and say they're going to take your seven-year-old child away from you without any explanation, you're in an unknown place, most people are not speaking your language, um, she was as terrified as one can be. And uh, she was not given an explanation again. Uh, they were separated. And then Miss Mia, Ms. Mia uh, went to another facility. And after that, she was... Uh, going through asylum, beginning of asylum proceedings. She had her interview, it's called a credible fear interview, to see, okay, what, what actually are you coming from? Is it a legitimate threat um, on your life or you know, things of that nature? Uh, she passed that interview. It was, it was shown that she did have uh, a credible fear um, and a reason to seek asylum. So at that point, uh, the next day, uh, they put her on the phone with her son. Now at this point, it had been about one month she had not heard anything about her son. She had been asking desperately where her son was. She had not been able to speak to him on the phone. She had not been able to have any idea where he was. And from our understanding, the child did not know where his mother was and had no explanation for why they were separated. Now, we filed a lawsuit because this is unconscionable. Nexus de Rachel Sumanos, attorney Dallas LaPierre, explained the second part of the lawsuit. What we filed is called an emergency motion for a temporary restraining order to enjoin the defendants from keeping uh, Ms. Maya Maya's child from her, which is a really technical way of saying we filed a motion for the court to require that the U.S. government give back her child now. It's called a temporary restraining order because the order is temporary only during the course of the case and until the final decision is made in the case. However, it is an emergency motion that's heard immediately so that relief can be granted now. It's granted in rare situations where the damage caused by the uh, ongoing harm cannot be made up for at the end of the case. So if you get hurt and somebody breaks your leg, at the end of the case, you're gonna get paid. And that's fine, we don't need to pay you until then. But in this case, every single day that Ms. Maya Maya's child is away from her, she is suffering. Her child is suffering. And that harm is permanent, long lasting, and cannot be made up for with money. So a temporary restraining order is a method by which we can have the court rule that the child has to be given back now, not at the end of the case, not when we get a declaratory relief that says that what the government is doing is wrong, is unconstitutional, is in violation of international law, but right now while that decision is made to avoid the ongoing harm while the case is ongoing. LaPierre says we as a country have victimized Meha Meha and her child. She has had no criminal charges or prosecution at all. What she does have is a request for asylum because of where she came from. The situation she left was so horrific, so dangerous, and so deadly harmful to her child and herself that she took her child and traveled by foot, by car, by train, by whatever method she could find to get here across multiple countries in incredibly dangerous countries, an incredibly difficult and hard journey that she took to get here. 
to seek a way to keep her child safe. And when she got here to escape that persecution, the U.S. government, and because it is our government, you and I are now persecuting her again, have now taken her child from her again, and she is suffering that same fear here in the land of the free. And that's something that we need to address. It must be noted that due to overwhelming international and domestic pressure, Donald J. Trump signed an executive action today halting this draconian inhumane practice. However, his executive action does not address Meha Meha and her son or the approximate 2,300 other children that have been separated from their parents. Nexus Derechos Humanos is a pro bono civil rights law firm and does not charge their clients any money. The law firm receives 100% of its funding from Nexus Services Incorporated. Nexus CEO and President Mike Donovan said his company believes in the inherent worth and dignity of every human being and will stand up to evil and injustice wherever it rears its ugly head. From the District of Columbia, Theodore Whitelow for Breaking Through.